Hey guys, hope you're well. So in this lesson, we're gonna look at direct and indirect proportion. It's really easy. Have a look at the following, okay? So on the left-hand side here, um, now X could be anything. X could be like, um, as you'll see examples that we're gonna do in this lesson, X could be people or time, whatever, and then Y will just be something else, okay? You'll see that as we go along. So X and Y can be anything, okay? Now what I want you to look at is, I want you to quickly multiply these two numbers together. What does that give you? 18. Multiply these two numbers together, 32. Multiply these two, two number, numbers together, it gives you 50. Can you see that these numbers are not the same? Okay, then I want you to divide the numbers. So let's say the bigger number divided by the smaller number. Six divided by three is two. Eight divided by four is two. 10 divided by five is two. So look at that. These numbers are all the same. So with direct proportion, when you divide, the answer remains the same. The answer remains the same. So I want you to remember that with direct, I want you to remember divide, okay? The D for direct goes with the D for divide. Perfect. Now, if we had to quickly go and draw this graph, I just wanna show you what happens. So let's say we put X at the bottom and Y at the top. So if, for example, you put X as three and Y as six, so let's just put here uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then let's just put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So if you go put X as three and Y as six, so X is three and Y is six, that would be somewhere over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so X is three and Y is six over there. Now, if you had to go look at this point, um, when X is four, Y is eight. So when X is four, Y is eight, that would be somewhere over there. And then when X is five, one, two, three, four, five, Y is 10, which would be somewhere over there. So when you connect it, you would see that it's a straight line, okay? Now, if you had to go, um, the way that it works is if you had to go back, um, I haven't drawn this perfectly, but it will actually always go right to the beginning. So I want you to know that when you have direct, it makes a straight line, okay? So let's just say there, it makes a straight line. Now let's look at indirect proportion. So if you had to go multiply these, that'll give you 100. If you had to multiply these, that'll give you 100. And if you had to multiply these, that would give you 100. Ah, so when you are busy with indirect, the numbers will multiply. You must multiply, okay? Oh, but something I forgot to tell you um, about this one. Can you see that what's happening to these numbers? Are they going up or are they going down? They are going up. Three goes to four, goes to five, so the numbers are going up. And look at what these numbers are doing. Six goes to eight, goes to 10. So what are these numbers doing? They're also going up. So that is what direct variation, direct proportion, sorry, does. Um, when the one goes up, the other one goes down. And then if the other one, if the one goes down, then the other one also goes down. Okay, so that's something you need to remember. When the, when they both they either both go up or they either both go down. But let's see what happens over here. Look what happens to these numbers. They are going up. So they're going up. But look at what happens to these numbers. They are going down. They're becoming smaller. So when the one goes up, the other one is going down. And then in some examples, when the, these ones go down, then the ones at the bottom go up, okay? So here, the one goes up and the one goes down. With this one, if, they, if the one goes up, the other one goes up. And if the one goes down, the other one goes down. So let's just say here, if one goes up, the other goes down. Here we can say if one goes up, goes up as well. Um, and then we can also say, if one goes down, the other goes down. And then with indirect proportion, if one goes, if one goes up, then the other one goes down, other goes down. And if one goes down, then the other goes up. Okay, now if we had to just go draw a graph, X and Y. Now I'm not gonna go draw 100 little lines, but if X is one, let's just put one, two, three, four. So if X is one, 
then y is a very big number, which is 100. So let's just put it up here. So that would be over there. If x is 2, then y is 50. So that would be over there. And then if x is 4, uh, y is 25, which would be over there. And so it's not a straight line. You see that? It actually makes a curve makes a curve. And so that's the summary you need to know. Now we're just going to, the most important part, to be honest, is this part here. This part is going to give you everything you need to know. So just remember that. Okay, now let's go do some examples. Okay, so if four, so you've got to think about these questions carefully. If four people do a job, it'll take eight hours. How long will the job take if there are seven people? Okay, so think about it. There are four people and they're busy doing a job. Maybe they are painting a room or building a house. And how long does it take? Eight hours. Now, all of a sudden, we are going to make more people, okay? So what will that do to the job? Will it make the job take even longer or will it make the job go faster? It should make it go faster. So what are we doing to the number of people? The number of people are going up. What are we doing to the number of hours? Well, those are going to go down because it's going to go faster. So if it was eight hours, maybe now it's going to be five hours. So the number of people are going up, but the number of hours are going down. So if you remember from the previous slide, that's going to be indirect proportion. And so multiplying is what we want to do. So this is going to be indirect Okay, so should we multiply or divide? We should multiply, and now we're gonna find the answer. So all that you do is the following. There's people, and there's hours, okay? And then you're just gonna say four people, and that goes with eight hours, and then seven people goes with this many hours, okay? Now we're not gonna do any multiplying across like I've showed you in previous lessons. That is not something we do with direct, indirect. Um, what we do here is we said we should multiply. So we multiply. Now you might be confused. Should we multiply these numbers or should we multiply these numbers? Or um, because let me show you here. You see x could have been maybe people and then y could be hours for example. And so, so, so as we just said, um, one of them is like people and one of them is like hours. And so it's these numbers that we multiplied, okay, or divided. It's not, um, you don't go this way, okay? So it's going to be the different categories, like people and hours. You either multiply or divide those. So we said for this question, we are going to multiply. So here's people and hours. So you're going to multiply those two. So 4 times 8 is 32. And then if you multiply these two, so we can call this x, then that must also be 32, okay? And so, because remember, we said that when you multiply the numbers, they must always give you the same value. So when we multiplied these two, it gave us 32. So when you multiply those two, it will give you 7x. And then to get x alone, you divide both sides by 7. And so x will be 4.57. And then that will be measured in? hours. There are currently 10 people on a camp. Okay, so you must picture that when you read these questions. There's 10 people, they're having a camp. The food can last for eight days. So the food that they have can last them for eight days, okay? Suddenly, three people get injured and they have to leave the camp. They leave their food behind with the other campers. Okay, so how long will the food now last the remaining people? Okay, so think about that carefully. There were 10 campers, and altogether the food would last for eight days. Okay, so the, 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 the food would last for eight days. Now all of a sudden, three people have to leave the camp. Okay, so that means there are seven campers left over, and you need to try to work out how many days will the food still be available. Now you've got to think about it carefully. What have we done to the number of campers? We've made the number of campers go down. Now you've got to think about this. Imagine you and your imagine you are together with a bunch of people, so there's ten of you all together, and there's eight days worth of food for all of the ten people. Okay? Now three of the campers have to leave. So that remaining food. Is it going to last you guys longer now or less time? It should last you longer. So if the, so, so the amount of days should go up. So you see the number of campers is going down, but the number of days that the food will last is going up because now there's less people to eat the food, so it will last them longer. So when the one is going down, the other is going up. That is called indirect. 
Okay, so should we multiply or divide? Well, we've learned that with indirect, you must multiply. And now it says find the answer. Okay, so you're going to multiply these two numbers together, which is 80. And then if you multiply these two, that must also give you 80. Because remember, with indirect, when you multiply, it should always stay the same. So in this example, it was 100, 100, and 100. So it must always stay the same. So now, if you want to get x by itself, you have to divide both sides by 7. And so x would be 11 0.43 days. So now that there's only seven campers left, the food will last for 11.43 days. A car can drive 11 kilometers with two liters of petrol. Okay, so we've got um, kilometers and liters of petrol. Okay, so here we have 11 kilometers and two liters of petrol. Now it says, how long will it drive with nine liters of petrol? Okay, so the amount of petrol, they are increasing it. Can you see that? From two to nine, they are increasing the number. Now, if you know the way a car works, and if you just think about it carefully, a car can drive 11 kilometers with two liters of petrol. How long will it drive with nine liters of petrol? So if you have more petrol in the car, it can drive further. So the number of kilometers should also go up. So because both of them are going up, or if both of them are going down, or if both of them are going up, that is called direct. If one of them is going up and one of them is going down, then it's called indirect. Okay, or if one of them is going down and the other one's going up, that's also called indirect. But if both of them are going up, or if both of them are going down, then it's called direct. Okay, so because it's direct, we are actually going to divide. So you can take, uh, for example, I always like to choose the bigger number first. So you could say 11 divided by 2. So we could say 11 divided by 2, which is 4 point, whoopsie, which is 5.5. Okay, and then you can, and then you must divide these two as well. So x divided by 9 is, must also be 5.5. Because when you divide them, the number must stay the same, just like we learned over here. When we divided, we got 2. When we divided, we got 2. When we divided, we got 2. So here, we divided and we got 5.5. And I said this one divided by this one. So now we're going to say this one divided by this one. And that must give us 5.5. Now the way to get this 9 by itself, this is where you need to understand equations. So if you remember the chapter with equations, um, this is a divide sign. So the opposite of that is a multiply. So you're going to multiply this side by 9. And what you do to the one side, you do to the other side. So that these 9s would cancel over here. And so you end up with x equals to 5.5 multiplied by 9. And so x will be 49.5 kilometers. Okay, so you see how the car can drive further because it has more petrol. Four more examples. This one says it takes three painters. Okay, so we've got painters and we've got days. So we've got three painters and eight days. Now, how long will it take with 10 painters? So we're going to say 10 painters over here. So now let's see what they did to the number of painters. Well, what did they do? They increased the number of painters. So you've got to think about this carefully. If there are three people painting a house, it takes them eight days. Now, if you have 10 painters, it should go even faster. So instead of it being eight days, it'll become less. So this number is going to go down. So these numbers increased and these numbers decreased. So that is called indirect. That means we will multiply. So we're going to multiply these two numbers together, which is 24. And we're going to multiply these two numbers, which is 10x. And we know that when you multiply, the values must be the same. So we can say that 10x will be equal to 24. And so to get x by itself, you divide by 10. And then what you do to the one side, you do to the other side. And so x will be, so if you cancel that out, x will be 2.4 hours. This one says that John can run 10 kilometers in three hours. Okay, so it's the kilometers and hours. Those are the two different categories. So John can run 10 kilometers in three hours. How far can he run in? Four hours. 
Okay, so the number of hours, you see how they changed it from three to four, so they increased that, so I show it as an increase like that. Now you gotta try to think about this. So John can run, picture this in real life, in three hours, John runs 10 kilometers, okay? So if he can run for four hours, he should be able to run even further, so this number should go up as well. So you see that both of the numbers are gonna go up, so when they're both going in the same direction, that is called direct, where you divide. So we're gonna, I always like to take the big number, so we're gonna say 10 divided by three, or let's say 10 divided by three, and then here you're gonna say x divided by four, and we know that these two must be equal to each other, because we learned in the very beginning that when it's direct, then when you divide, the answers must always be, um, the answers must always be the same, okay? So we divided them and then we make them equal. And so the way that you do this now is you need to get rid of this four. Now you see that this four is at the bottom. That is, means that these two are being divided. So the opposite of divide is multiply. So what you do to the one side, you must do to the other side. So these fours are gonna cancel. And so you end up with x equals 13.33, and that would be measured in kilometers. Two more examples. Well done if you've made it this far, that's awesome. So here it says that it takes three water pumps four hours to fill a swimming pool. So let's say you have like a swimming pool, for example, um, and you've got these water pumps. Now, let's say we draw a little pump like that, and that pump is spraying water into the pool, okay? And they said that we have three of those. Now, if you have three of those, it says that it will take four hours to fill the pool. Now, what if there are five pumps? Ah, okay, so the different categories here is gonna be number of pumps and the number of hours. So when they have three water pumps, then it takes four hours. And if it is five water pumps, then we need to figure out the number of hours. So what are they doing to the number of pumps? Well, they increased it from three to five, so they increased it, so I'll show that with an up arrow. Now you gotta think about this carefully. They're adding more water pumps now, so does that mean it's gonna be quick, faster to fill up the swimming pool, or is it gonna take less time? It's gonna take less time, so this number is actually gonna go down. Some learners, they wanna say up because it's gonna go faster, but when something goes faster, it means that the time will become lower, okay? So you see the number of pumps is going up, but the number of hours is gonna go down. That is called indirect, and so we multiply. So I'm gonna multiply these two values. I'm gonna multiply these two values. I'm gonna make them equal, okay? And so now we need to get x by itself. And so we divide both sides by five so that this cancels, and so you end up with x equals to 12 over five, which is 2.4 hours. Here's our last example. Three strawberry pickers take 10 hours to pick all of the strawberries in a field. How long, it will, how long will it take? Well, let's first put our categories. So um, number of pickers and the number of hours. So if you have three strawberry pickers, it'll take 10 hours. Now if you have four, five strawberry pickers, how many hours would it take? So the number of pickers is increasing from three to five, so we increased that. Now, think about this carefully. If you've got three people picking strawberries in a field, it takes 10 hours. If you all of a sudden have five people, well that means it's gonna happen much faster, so the time is gonna go down. So the one thing is going up and the other thing is going down, and so that is called indirect, and so we multiply. So we're gonna multiply these numbers, we're gonna multiply these two, and then those two must be the same. So to get x by itself, we divide by five, divide by five, and so x will be uh, 30 divided by five, which is six, and then we can just say six hours.